Hello guys, this is Rob with Tech. Today we're going to be going over Vault Warden. So this was actually a fork from Bitwarden. That's why the name similarity. But uh, for those of you wondering what is Vault Warden, it's a password manager that we can self-host. So first of all, uh, looking into this Vault Warden server, I mean, I have in my GitHub, I'm going to provide the YAML file so we can just copy and paste it into the Open Media Vault. So I'm going to use Open Media Vault. Uh, the thing is that on open media vault you support 80 so this is going to conflict so what we're going to do is we're going to set up uh 80 81 i mean it really doesn't matter as long as the port is open on your end uh, also another thing is that you need a form of a, a proxy a reverse proxy because uh, this application requires https and uh, it does not get provided by this application so if you didn't see my previous video of nginx proxy manager make sure to check that video out because you're going to need to do that before this so let's get started so here in my open media vault i just need to show you networks so we have this proxy network now this proxy network i have what we do like inspect we can see that i have several containers in here like portainer nginx proxy manager um I have some of the containers off, but basically what it is is that when we create the Nginx proxy manager, you have to have it in the same network as all the other containers. So that's what this is. So I basically created a new network. I called it proxy dash network. I left it at bridge subnet. I did 172.1.0.0 for slash 24. And then here I did 172.1.0.1. In the IP range, I did 171. 1.0.0 slash 26. If this is a little confusing, check out my, my previous video on the Nginx proxy manager, but, but uh, that's where I created that proxy network. So that's where that's going to come from. Just wanted to give you a quick insight. Another thing is that in the YAML file that I'm going to use, if we go to settings, there's this thing in Open Media Vault that came in with Open Media Vault 6, Open Media Vault 7 is the change to compose data path. So we already linked this app data, a folder. So if we go into our shared, shared folders and we check this app data, it's actually just linking to data, Docker app data. It's just, well, just an FYI. So going back to services, compose files, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to call this a uh, vault warden. And then I'm going to copy in the YAML file. Okay, so in here we see that we're going to use port 8081 because if we use 8080, if we just use 80 on this side, which is the side that gets exposed to the open media well, it's going to conflict with the web GUI. The only thing that we're missing here is we need to provide the admin token. So we need to generate this. Other thing is the container name, make sure we, we know the container name. Actually, I'm just going to call it, not with the RS, just what warden. Okay, so here's what I was telling you about the volume where this is going to get stored. So by putting it, change to compose data path. And then I always like to have the, the name of the container and then... Um, VW data. So basically this in this app data directory is going to go ahead and create this vault warden folder and it's going to create this VW data folder and it's actually going to link it to forward slash data in the Docker container. So let's go ahead and generate this admin token. So I'm just going to click save right now. To generate the admin token, we got to open up SSH and let's say session to your open media vault. So we're gonna do here my password. Now I'm gonna leave that command and also like instructions on my GitHub, but basically we're gonna run this command right here. Let me remove this, it's just gonna be the Docker run. So basically this is going to download the vault warden image that we're going to use which is it vault warden the forza server now in here let's see let's try it again oh 
there's an extra character. They're just supposed to be Docker Run dash dash RM for remove dash IT while warden. Where's our server? This is the image. Then for slash while warden hash. Now this is gonna give us a generator our key. Now here we're gonna provide a password. Make sure you put something secure. This is how you're gonna access the admin panel. Um, not not the web GUI, but um, the admin panel where you can modify SMTP parameters and whatnot. So I'm just gonna create a very generic password here. We have to confirm the password. So here's our token. So we can just copy the whole thing. I'm gonna go back to Open Media Vault and find our our Vault Warden. I'm gonna edit this. I'm gonna modify our admin token. Now, what we have to remove is this little single quote here in the beginning. We have to remove that, and at the end, we have to remove it as well. Now, the other thing that we have to do to make this string work is you see this dollar signs. We need a add another dollar sign to it because of the way that docker uh, takes the data and actually going to manipulate the string so make sure you just add double up on the dollar sign so this will be it should be a total of five all right so there it is so now i should be able to save this and i should be able to start it let's see all right, so it started. Now, if you go to the IP address, it's not gonna work because like I said, we needed to add it into a, a reverse proxy. So 40 colon 8081. So I think if we create a count, we do like, it's gonna do a random. I'm just gonna create generic password. Then we're going to create an account. So you're going to see this message. This browser requires HTTPS to use this web uh, web vault. This is what I mean that you need a um, reverse proxy. So what we're going to do, we're just going to close this. We're going to go to our engine proxy. This is the Nginx proxy manager we already have. So I already have it here. So in here, I'm just going to create add a proxy host. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to call this pass dot ytdemo.duckdns.org. This is what we had created on the other video. So if you want to check that other video on this Nginx proxy manager. So here we're going to do HTTP and then we're going to do the name of the container, which was Vault Warden. Now port, it was using port 80 because you're going to use the port that was uh, on the right side of the, of the compose file so it's going to be port 80 then we're going to do web sockets and block common exploits ssl we're going to do the wildcard force ssl save now if we go ahead and click it uh here it is so now it opens up and you see that we have this domain name uh so in here i'm just going to go ahead and create the account again i'm going to call it admin i think why demo the duck dns .org. I mean, of course, this just puts your correct email here. Now, name, your name, password, password, make sure you make something secure because this would be your password vault. Of course, this is an example, so I'm just using a very generic password. So I'm going to create. Oh, it has to be 12 characters, so let me see. And then password's not gonna match. So it says that my password is weak. So of course, as an example, so I'm just gonna say yes. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and log in now. now I highly recommend you to go into settings, security, uh, two-step login make sure you set up a your authenticator app or any of these services so you can have a, a secure password vault also if you want to set up the email verification codes you need to add an smtp server so uh, we can do that with the admin token all right so uh, before we get to, to do that we're going to go back to vault if you're not familiar with this just going to be able to click here new item you can specify like when you want to add entries, big test, and then like password. 
you can put a password or you can even generate it for you you generate a password you copy like that you also have like the url um notes you can just save it so i'm just going to save this as an example so now we have our first one uh, of course there's other things that you can add like if you do new item you also have card identity secret note now if you want to back this up like in case that you want to move it to another system what you can do is in settings you can go into these preferences no security somewhere in here or no, my bad, tools, and then you're gonna do export vault and make sure you just export as a JSON encrypted. Now here I always use the password protected. I just put a very secure password in here just in case that you wanna back up your password in case something happens to them. So that's pretty much it on this vault ward. And now the other menu that I wanna show you is, uh, remember the admin token that we set up a password? I'm gonna go ahead and log out of here. Now here in the IP address, if, I mean, in the name, if you do forward slash admin, it's going to send you to this authenticator key needed. Uh, in here, we're going to specify the password that you use, the one that you generated and the, the token. This is going to be the actual password, not, not the token. So the token gets hashed. So the hash actually is the password gets converted into the hash so whenever you put the password here so this will be the regular password like in my case this is my regular password of course don't use this so now we're going to enter here we're going to click here on diagnostics and you're going to see that we have um like an error for a domain so you see here no match no https so to fix this we're just going to go here in settings and general settings now we can just copy here the domain that we used. And then we have to click save here on the bottom. Config save correctly. Now if we go back to diagnostic, that should clear up our domain message. All right, the other thing that we should do, I mean, if you, if you wanna get those uh, notification, like emails for password changes or security alerts, we gotta go back to settings and then here in SMTP email settings, you have to set up this SMTP uh, email settings to get it working. So the way that I did it to get mine working is I ended up using Google. I created a um, generic email, Gmail account. Uh, so if you go, actually, uh, if you do that, you create a, a Google, a Gmail account, you can actually Google, what's it called? Uh, Google app passwords. So you're going to find this sign in with app passwords. So there's a requirement. If you create the Gmail, just make sure that you set up a two factor authentication. Uh, once you do that, you can just go down here and then you can specify. Well, where is it? Um, here you can go under this tab it says app password revoked after but in reality you care about creating a new password a new app a password so the thing is that you require this app password so you can actually use it here for vault warden or you can even set it up for open media vault under notifications you can use the same smtp information um so just like i said just make sure when you create if you create just a dummy gmail uh, make sure you set up the two-step two verification or two-factor authentication. After you do that, you go in here. You can just set up create a new app password. Now, keep in mind, every time that you change your password on the account, um, it's going to erase all your app passwords. So just keep that in mind. Also, this app passwords, there is going to be a separate password to what you set up on the Gmail. The, the whole purpose of the app password is to provide a way of sending email but without account access so that's what that is now for the settings if, if you were to be following if you actually use a, a gmail and use the app password um the information that you're going to set up in here would be the host would be the smtp now for the secure smtp this would be uh force underscore tls for port it's going to be 465 from address this is going to be the address that you create from Gmail. So your Gmail address. Now from name, that's self-explanatory, just the, the name that's going to be on the email. Username, this would be the same Gmail address you created. 
password this is going to be the app password that you generated so the app password and then that's it the other thing you do is just once you do that i mean of course mine's not gonna work but you just save yes yeah, so i don't have the mandatory so yeah so in case that you do that now i just want to i provided you all the information after you do that you can just click save enter here your email address and then after you enter your email address you click send test email and, and if you get a test i mean the if you received the email then it worked also, you're probably thinking, like, from where am I going to get the the email from, right? Because there's no recipients. But the thing is that when you generated this account, remember that we set up the, so the email that you set up on your account. That's the email that is going to be used to generate or send those emails. That's pretty much it for this guide. I mean, there, of course, there's a lot more stuff in here that you can look at. I was poking around in the settings. But that'll be all, guys. Thank you very much. Um, if you all have any more video suggestions, drop it down in the comments. If you have any questions regarding this setup, drop it down in the comments. If you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe.